In this short video, I'll show you how you can use Pivot to conduct 5D plus observations and evaluations. I'm on a demo site and I'm going to log in as a principal. From here, I want to go to my evaluations dashboard. And I'll pause briefly to walk through the information that's on this page. I have a card for each staff member I'm responsible for observing. I can see how many observations have been completed so far or started. I can see if a growth plan has been started, evaluation, or summative evaluation. So let's talk about these colors. You'll notice I have yellow circles and a blue circle. Those correspond with the key above. So in this case, Rose has had four unannounced observations and one announced observation. You'll also notice that one of the circles isn't filled in all the way. That means that I, as her evaluator, have not yet finalized the documentation. So just to recap, empty circle means not quite done yet, and a filled in circle means I've finished and shared the results with the teacher. What else is on these cards? Take note of the bottom row. You can click and star staff members. You can think of a variety of reasons you may want to do that. Maybe to star ahead of time the people you intend to observe in a given week. The purpose of the star is to give you something to filter by because there's a toggle right here that says only show starred. Again, you can use that however you wish. There's also a folder icon and when clicked, this will show you all the observation, evaluation, growth plan, and summative evaluation work that has occurred for that teacher as long as you have used Pivot in your district. So it's a way to look at the historical files for that staff member. You could remove the staff member from your evaluation dashboard. And of course, up here with the green add personnel icon, you could add someone. But let's imagine you're ready to do an observation. To get started, find the staff member's card, and in this bottom row, select the addition icon. And this will prompt you to either start an observation, evaluation, or summative evaluation. Let's start an observation. In step one, confirm that you've selected the right staff member. In step two, confirm that you've selected the right rubric. And please note, this video and this training is only about using 5D+. In step three, select whether this is announced, unannounced, or some other type of observation. In step four, you'll pick the dimensions you want to observe with. In other words, which part of the 5D plus rubric will you be referencing and considering as you're observing the teacher? And in step six, you can make this observation private. And if you click this info icon, it'll say a bit more but 99 times out of 100, that's probably not going to be the case. So let's begin. All right, I'm in the room now. I'm ready to observe rows. I can start my timer. That's optional, but I like seeing on the screen how much time has elapsed. And in this text box here, I'm going to begin scripting my evidence. So as students enter the room, they pick up a do now which serves as a check for understanding of yesterday's learning objective. When I hit enter, that piece of evidence is collected in this left column. So let's just fast forward and imagine I've done that quite a bit. Again, each time I hit enter, the piece of evidence is collected in this left column. I can also upload files as evidence. So let's imagine I'm in the room and I see a great student presentation occurring. I take out my phone, I take a short video of that, and then I upload the media later. I could also snap a photo of student work. You can imagine lots of ways you could use this files upload feature. And if you ever need to consult the rubric while you're conducting the observation, simply click this purple tab in the bottom right corner. Here's the entire 5D plus rubric, including indicator language at each performance level. All right, I know that was fast, but it, just to recap, you simply collect your evidence in this box and hit enter. Now let's imagine you've been in the classroom the amount of time you intended to be, 25, 30, 45 minutes, and you're ready for the next step. We've collected our evidence, and now we are ready to code it. So how do we get started? Well, on the left, 
is the column with all the evidence we collected during our observation. So simply click a piece of evidence, and you'll notice that the dimensions and indicators of the 5D plus rubric pop up. All you have to do is assign these pieces of evidence to indicators. If you ever need a reminder of what these indicators represent, the full language behind them, again, you can click the purple bar in the bottom right corner. All right, so now we've collected evidence, we've coded it to rubric indicators, now let's review. Here is the evidence I've collected, the coding to the rubric, and if I click a piece of evidence now, I can leave my noticings and wonderings. I'm noticing that. I'm wondering if. And your noticing and noticings and wonderings will be tied directly to the piece of evidence you clicked to start writing. All right, now let's go to the final step of an observation. At the bottom, you'll notice you could save and return. In other words, you're not ready to share this with the teacher in any way. You want to think about this a bit more, maybe come back and edit some of your comments. You can share this with the teacher. Now this does not finalize it. This is a step right before that. So you, I could email this to Rose. She could see the evidence I collected, the indicators to which I coded them, coded the evidence, and also my noticings and wonderings. Or if I'm ready, I can finalize the observation, which is going to lock everything down. But when Rose receives the email and logs in, she can respond to my noticings and wonderings. It's also worth noting that you can digitally sign. And if you do save your digital signature, it shows up on the printed version of the, evalu of the observation as well. For the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and finalize this observation. All right, so what have we achieved so far? We talked about the dashboard, we reviewed the information that's on a staff member's card, and we completed an observation. Now, let's start an evaluation. In step one, again, make sure you've selected the correct staff member. In step two, make sure you've selected the right rubric. And here you have a choice, which observations do you want to use for this evaluation? Now by default, Pivot's going to load in data, evidence, from all the observations since your last one. But you could also set a custom date range. So let's begin. Now, according to the 5D Plus process, we haven't rated anything yet. We've only coded evidence to indicators on the rubric. Now at this stage, at the evaluation stage, we are making judgments. You'll notice that the unrated column has a number in many cases. You will have far more numbers than I have on my screen because you will have way more evidence collected by the point by the time you get to this point. So there's one piece of evidence aligned to 1P2 and if I want to see what that evidence is all I have to do is click the info icon and here it is including the date on which I observed this evidence. So thinking about all of this evidence and reviewing it holistically then you can make judgments about each indicator. And after you've made judgments about each indicator, you make judgments about the dimension. And then of course you can leave comments per dimension. So you would repeat that process through the six dimensions of the 5D plus rubric. And eventually you'll land on the summary page, which will show you all of the ratings you've made for each dimension and then you have to make one more overall judgment, which is your final rating. And then you can leave your overall evaluation comments. Much like before, you can digitally sign. And this time you can't share, you can only finalize. But when you finalize, the staff member you are completing this for will receive an email. So let's recap. We've reviewed the evaluations dashboard, talked about the staff cards, the information that's readily available, and we've discussed how to start an observation and an evaluation. 
In a future video, we'll be sure to talk about summative evaluations. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at pivot at the word 5 hyphen star tech.com. Thanks so much for using Pivot.